Hi, my name is Ross Cayley and I'm a senior geologist who works for the Geological Survey of Victoria, which is part of the Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions. Like many Victorians, I felt this morning's earthquake. First there was a rumble and then came a wobble. The rumble was from the P wave. This is a pressure wave that travels outwards from the location of the earthquake like a sound wave in the rock. The wobble was from the S wave or shear wave, which travels from that same location, but more slowly so that it takes slightly longer to arrive at the places where it is felt. The time difference of several seconds between the two wave arrivals immediately indicated to me that the earthquake epicentre must be located about 100 kilometres away from where I experienced it in Melbourne. Hi, my name's Tim Rowling. I used to work with Ross, but now I work at Oscope, which is an organisation that puts sensors for researchers around Australia to monitor geological changes like earthquakes. I also felt the earthquake this morning while I was on a teleconference to a colleague of ours, Dr. Steve Hill, who's in Canberra. When the quake hit, I was pretty excited too, like geologists are by these things. And about a minute later, Steve felt it as well in Canberra. So like Ross, we quickly knew it was a very big event. And we thought it was probably located somewhere between here and Canberra, but probably a little bit closer to Melbourne. Using seismographs, Geoscience Australia have determined that the earthquake epicentre was near Matlock, east of Melbourne, at a depth of approximately 10 kilometres. Early analysis suggests that with a magnitude of about 5.9, this earthquake is one of the biggest onshore earthquakes ever recorded in Victoria. Any earthquake of this size is usually followed by a number of smaller aftershocks. So it's no surprise that there's been at least six of these so far. The aftershocks are expected to diminish in frequency and intensity with time. I have a small seismometer in my study at home and quickly pulled up the seismograph from the event. It was really quite exciting as this has been operating for years and mostly just records my teenage boys banging doors. Although newsworthy and a really memorable event, this morning's earthquake is still relatively small by global standards. And today's earthquake is consistent with previous earthquakes recorded in Victoria, for example, the magnitude 5.2 Maui earthquake, which occurred in 2012. And the magnitude of today's earthquake is what geoscientists expect, based on what we know about the geology of Victoria. But many people are probably wondering why earthquakes occur in Victoria at all. Australia, including Victoria, lies in the middle of a relatively stable geological plate. We are mostly protected from the larger earthquakes that occur along the active plate boundaries. Our fortunate geology means that today's earthquake is amongst the larger earthquakes that geoscientists consider likely to occur in Victoria. Victoria does experience occasional earthquakes though, and this is because geology is all interconnected. Our geology is connected to other places, and stress generated by geological processes operating in those other places, even places located thousands of kilometres away, can be transferred into Victoria to cause our earthquakes. And this is exactly what we think is happening. The other place most relevant to Victoria's earthquake story is the Australian plate boundary. And the closest part of the Australian plate boundary to Victoria is New Zealand. New Zealand sits on the boundary between the Australian and Pacific plates. And these are currently colliding against each other. The picturesque New Zealand Alps are the result of that ongoing collision. Some of the compressive stress from that active New Zealand plate boundary collision is being transmitted west through the crust beneath the Tasman Sea and into southeast Australia. Geoscientists can even measure this force and its direction in our own geology. It is this stress that causes the smaller earthquakes in Victoria, and this means that Victoria's evolving geological history is intimately tied to what's happening in New Zealand. Earthquakes in Victoria occur when small segments of pre-existing natural fault lines reactivate in response to this stress. Today, a small segment of an ancient fault, a fault formed over 400 million years ago when much of Victoria was first uplifted out of an ancient ocean, appears to have reactivated to cause today's earthquake. Geologists have previously mapped this fault and we named it the Governor Fault. It's a large complex structure that extends from near Echuca and the Murray River in northern Victoria to near the Gippsland Lakes in the south. It passes through the heart of the Victorian Alps. Geoscientists have imaged this fault and shown it to continue to below 35 kilometres depth in the Earth's crust. It likely extends much deeper than that. 
it was already considered as a prime candidate to be locally reactivated in the current Victorian stress field. However, it is not the only ancient fault line in the state that can experience earthquakes today. Victorian geologists have mapped hundreds of other such faults across the full width of Victoria, and there will be other faults that we don't yet know about as well. And this is why research into understanding Victoria's geology is ongoing. Indeed, we know that there have been some very significant earthquakes in Victoria. A large fault scarp formed near Echuca between 25,000 and 70,000 years ago, dammed up the entire Murray River and formed the then huge Barmer Lakes. Based on the size of the surface rupture, this event was estimated to be larger than a magnitude seven. Imagine the impact of an event that size in Victoria today, based on what we felt with the earthquake earlier. It is not possible to predict the precise time or location of any given earthquake, or exactly which fault or which bit of a fault might reactivate next. However, it is possible to use the landscape to predict where more active faults lie and it is no surprise to geologists that today's earthquake occurred in a very mountainous part of Victoria. Mountain uplift is a direct result of the fault reactivations that also cause earthquakes. Uplift of mountains in Victoria, particularly the Alps and the Strzelecki Ranges in Victoria's east, is testament to the cumulative effect of lots of small fault segment reactivations, which over several million years would have resulted in lots of small to medium sized earthquakes distributed all over central and eastern Victoria. Today's earthquake is just a continuation of that long ongoing natural process. The Geological Survey of Victoria has long known about the earthquake potential of our geology. So we're undertaking active research together with interstate and national research agencies. We want to better understand the stresses in the earth and to make sure risks from earthquake events can be identified and managed as effectively as possible. If you'd like to know a little bit more about the Geological Survey of Victoria's work and about the effects of earthquakes in the landscape, please view the short film entitled Geoscience Beneath the Australian Alps. It's available on the department's YouTube channel.